Who do you see as that inspirational figure that represents your generation? Like you can go out there and say, that, that could be my president. I support President Trump mm -hmm. because he represents freedom. freedom. I don't think we're tough on crime enough. In Texas, I feel like they just see you as a rare gem. That's the way that I feel about it. They're like, oh, you want to be a trad wife? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that, like, my dream is to be a mom, like, is to be a wife. Like, that's what I want. And when men hear that, it's like, I, they, want, they want that. I think when someone enters into any contractual agreement, such as taking out loans for college, there's an obligation to pay that back. COVID still exists in California, apparently. <laughs>that by the 2036 presidential race, Gen Z will represent 35% of eligible voters. They're growing up in a 21st century America that's far more diverse, inclusive, and globally connected than the 1950s and 1960s America of the GOP's base, Frey told me. Quote, they're going to shun the Republican Party as they get older. Exactly. So if this trend continues, then that will spell doom for the Republican Party. So they know that they have to respond, and they can respond in one of three ways. First of all, they can complain and call for the voting age to be raised to 21 or even 25 if your presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. But that wouldn't be very popular. In fact, Vivek's own staff objects to the idea, but that is one response. They could also try to appeal to voters directly by doing voter outreach. Now, the way that they go about this can range. They can try to make a policy appeal or try to pander uh, a la fellow kids, you know, make it seem as if conservatism is hip and cool. But they don't necessarily have to change anything per se, but just the mere attempt that they are trying to reach out to young voters and say, hey, we want your vote. That is one way to respond. And uh, finally, they can stop being utter dog shit and actually embrace policies that young people support. And then perhaps they will naturally gravitate towards the GOP. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. We all know that that's completely out of the question, which leaves them with the two former options. And since the 26th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution bars age-based restrictions on voting once you're over 18, well, that first response isn't actually a real option for them either, which means that they're left with one choice. They've got a pander, and that is exactly what they are officially trying to do. So there's been a couple of examples of right-wing propagandists trying to directly reach out to young voters. For example, Fox Business host Maria Bartiromo hosted a Young Conservatives Week where she brought on young conservatives like Tommy Loren to talk about young people problems. Also, Fox News host Lawrence Jones hosted several panels with young voters, and Alex Clark of Turning Point USA hosted a cute conservative panel where they made an appeal to young women. And that was uh, very, very interesting. But so far, based on what I've seen, and I've watched all of these videos, to say that their outreach to young people is not going well would be the understatement of the century. So we're going to look at a couple of examples here, and you're going to see what I mean. So the first being the cute conservative panel by Turning Point USA's Alex Clark. Um, this entire thing felt like a psyop to me to convince young conservative women that the way that they can attract boys, perhaps the best way to attract the best boys, is to be conservative. And the way that I'm setting this up makes it seem a lot better than it is in actuality, because this was incredibly condescending and patronizing. But they know that young women in particular pose a threat to them, given that young women are smart enough to realize that this party is going after their reproductive health. But just watch the way that they make this appeal to young women and say, hey, this is why you should be conservative. 
let, let me ask you guys something. Do you feel like you stand out in a good way to boys because you're conservative? Like, are they like, you're conservative, you're posting all of these oh, conservative yeah. they, like, beliefs? They see you as like a gem. Like, yeah. <laughs> because some of you aren't old enough to drink yet, but I mean, when I'm going out and stuff, like if I get asked at a bar, what do you do for a living? And I say, oh, I work in politics. Oh, so what does that mean? I say, I'm conservative. They flock to me, they love it. They love it, they'll gather their friends around, they'll be like, this girl says she's pro-life, and then they wanna have a whole discussion about it. So it plays well for me, so I'm curious, being younger, how it plays for you. It's definitely like one of two extremes, because in California, it's either like, I can't believe you don't want to split the check. I can't believe you you don't want to take care of um, take care of your man, but like lead the relationship. Everyone is very, at least in my area, against religion, against um, just general like the Ten Commandments, the those kinds of conservative values and religious values, or having a faith at all. When men tend to hear that I'm conservative, they run away just as fast as the girls. Mm. But when I go out of state, it's completely opposite reaction. So you need to live California. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Do high school guys bring up that you are really into politics? Um, usually they're into like fishing and hunting. <laughs> Do you think they find you intimidating? I think so, possibly. <laughs> yeah, I think all of us have been described as intimidating. Really? Yeah. yeah. I have too. Or too opinionated or... or or it's intimidating Absolutely. because I already have everything figured out. I'm like, well, you gotta catch up. You got a lot to learn. <laughs> in Texas, I feel like they just see you as a rare gem. That's the way that I feel about it. They're like, oh, you wanna be a trad wife? Perfect. <laughs> 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 like you, cause like I t I'm very upfront about that. Like my dream is to be a mom, like is to be a wife. Like that's what I want. And when men hear that, it's like, I, they, want, they want that. They, is anyone they pray else? For that. Is anyone else on your campuses or at your school saying things like, uh, oh, my biggest dream is to be a wife or a mom? No, you don't hear that anymore. Is it only career? You heard it here first, ladies. If you want to find yourself a good man, just forego any career ambitions and let them know that you want to be a trad wife and you want to be in the kitchen barefoot making him sandwiches for the rest of your life. And you also don't want to go to college and get yourself an education. And you can take it from these ladies that that's a bad decision because three out of four of them who are in college say that college is bad. Now you're in medical school, so that's so this is different. So this is different. But for you three and you two, um, you guys are both in college, mm -hmm. and you're in high school. Do you feel like college has been a waste of time? Yes. Would you have still gone to college? <laughs> yes and no. So I have to really work hard in school. I'm more create like I'm more creative, and like I could do anything else. But when you put like the, like a history textbook in front of me, I have to really really put in the work in order to get like good grades and everything. But when I was a freshman, I actually got sent home for 25 days because a person in my class tested positive for COVID and my professor called me on for the whole entire class. And he said, oh, well, you're not vaccinated, so just go home. I'm a politics and law major, so I want to do something in the political world and I'm going to a left-leaning university. I'm not learning anything. I, like, when I go to the Leadership Institute conferences in here, like Turning Point conferences, that's where I learn. Yeah, college is so stupid. I'm literally not learning anything, but I'm still in it for some reason. But don't make my mistake. You definitely shouldn't go to college, but I'm going to remain in college but don't go to college because you know you don't want to turn out like these liberal college educated folk here and end up voting democrat it's just so incredibly patronizing and insufferable and if i were a young woman i would be very pissed off and insulted if i saw that segment because you're starting to see the general trend here right they're trying to market tradcon values to young women in particular by trying to make it seem as if hey Young women, they only care about getting boys, so you can get a boy if you're a traditional conservative woman. And the way that it seems like they're trying to go about this is by getting other young people to preach about the benefits of traditional conservatism. Because I think that they're under the impression that young people will succumb to peer pressure or something, and if they can get conservatism to seem like a hip new trend that young people are all embracing, then maybe others will want to jump on the bandwagon too. I mean, it's difficult to sell though, which is a problem for them, because conservatism is inherently lame and uncool and morally bankrupt, and they'd have an easier time selling salt to a slug, which leaves them looking desperate and out of touch as they did here. So they're not only pitching traditional conservative values to young women, however, they're also reinforcing the narrative that it's not just good to be conservative, but it's the only good option for young women and all other women who are not conservative are sluts. I've been told that it is absolutely impossible and an anomaly today for there to be a woman who is under 25 years old 
unvaccinated, does not have an OnlyFans, and has a body count less than 10. True or That's false? True. 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 It's almost impossible to find? Oh, it's yes. so impossible. Yeah. We go back to the fact that when men meet a conservative woman, they're like, you are a rare gem. I'm going to yeah. put a ring on it so fast. And like I think <laughs> the best part of coming on like Turning Point conventions and all these conventions, because we've been traveling together for the past six weeks, different conventions. <laughs> And I think it's just great because like we're all the same here. Like I don't have to worry about feeling like oh we all dress adorable. No one dresses like the way that they shouldn't dress. So I feel like that's why we also like guys are like wait that one's different over mm -hmm. there. Like she's dressed like not with her whole skin out. Like you know her stuff's not sticking out. Like everything back at home in New Jersey. Like if you go out like you're like half naked, which is like why. And then women get upset when they put themselves on display and they get the reaction from men like right. that. And it's like obviously you're literally displaying yourself like you, that. You you're can't going dress to receive like that, that and not expect. A reaction. Mm -hmm. that, that's as simple as it gets. If, if you mm -hmm. do, then just you you can't walk around and get offended or mm -hmm. or mad or upset or angry because someone responds to that. Holy fucking shit! Honestly, watching that almost gave me a migraine, and seeing it again is just so triggering because it is insulting to think that they believe these young women are going to be able to bring in other young women into conservatism by basically slut shaming their peers. Well, be a conservative, otherwise you're a slut. We're the only peer good ones. It's just so insulting and sexist. I mean, they're basically saying here, if you are harassed by men for dressing a certain way, don't blame the man, blame the woman here because you're asking for it. I mean, I know boomers who would find that worldview antiquated and morally egregious because it is. Who thinks this way? This is fucking insane. They actually think that is going to bring in young women to conservatism and not just any conservatism. We're not talking about libertarianism. We're talking about traditional conservatism. They think that's going to make it seem attractive as they stick their nose up and tell you that they're better than you and better than all the other women. It's just, it is insane to me. So this is why I say their attempt to appeal to young people, not going that well. But apparently they think that's going to make conservatism look good to young women all right it's a bold strategy but we'll fucking see now we're gonna come back to the cute servatives in a moment i can't believe i said that out loud cute servatives is the worst word i've ever heard or said uh but i want to get to a different video because there's another trick that right-wing propagandists use to appeal to young people and it's a it's an appeal to their very real sense of disillusionment which is a better strategy right but it's their sense of disillusionment with the democratic party which exists because young people are indeed dissatisfied with biden and the Democratic Party. And so what they'll do is they'll have other young people also disillusioned with Democrats pitch Republicans as the alternative. So here's how some ex-Democrat millennials responded when Fox News' Lawrence Jones asked them what they're looking for in a candidate. Lydia, why did you leave the Democratic Party? Yeah, that not that the million dollar question? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I left uh, the Democrat Party uh, when I was 24 years old, I voted for Obama twice. It really began with conversations at work with coworkers, and then it led to me just seeing the bias in TV shows like The View and late night TV. And then I just at some point realized I no longer support these values. The Democrat Party is standing for something that I no longer or had always had in my in my culture, the way I was raised. I I just didn't support that anymore. And the Republican Party supported those values more closely. What about you, Sydney? Why did you leave the Democratic Party? Yeah, so when I was in college, that was the first time that I voted was when um, Donald Trump won the election. And on Smith, it was it's a women's college. So the whole campus was in mourning because Hillary Clinton didn't win the election. So I, it was a stark difference between then and 2020 when I had a lot of time on, our, on my hands, just like everybody else. And I really started to look into the Democrats and I realized that None of my values aligned with them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my values actually resembled that of the Republicans. I'm sure that so many fucking millennials can relate to that. You know, I too was once a Democrat, but then I watched The View and then I saw all of these triggered liberals on college campuses and thought, you know what? Liberals are a little bit cringe. So I think I'm going to abandon my entire worldview, all of the policy positions that I support and vote for a party that is going to let the planet cook us alive. That seems reasonable. I mean, it's just it's so patronizing that they think young people will hear these stories and think that they didn't already form coherent political opinions based on serious issues. 
Like how many people have seen The View and changed their entire fucking worldview, but this is what they think of young people. However, to his credit, Lawrence did speak to a lot of voters in early primary states. And for some reason, you know, the people that they tend to find don't really have the same priorities as most young people that I've talked to, right? But I mean, he's still talking to a lot of different people, but let's hear what they really care about. Trevor, what about you? What's the number one issue? I would say immigration as a whole, both yeah. illegal and legal. Free speech is a big issue, especially on college campuses with how conservative students are treated. Well, there's a lot of issues right now, but I'd say the most important would be the deep state. Broken families is probably at the forefront, and I think that stems from this war on masculinity that we've been seeing. National security is a big ticket item for me and yeah. I pay attention to what candidates are saying about it. Uh, I'm a pro-life Democrat um, and I- Do they still exist? We, we still exist, <laughs> we still exist. It's so interesting that you have that point of view because there's a lot of polling that suggests that Republicans should stay away from that issue because it could hurt them and you, you don't believe so. These are human beings being killed in our communities every day. And you know, if there's any candidate on either side of the uh, political aisle that wants my vote, you know, they're gonna have to face the abortion issue head on. It's impressive that they managed to find a Nazi and an anti-abortion Democrat for the same panel. I mean, <laughs> how do they do that? It's, it's, it's honestly genuinely impressive. And I also find it funny how they tried to gaslight Democratic Party politicians on the issue of abortion and implied that they're going to have to be a little bit more anti-abortion to win over young people like that guy. Yeah, because he's definitely representative of all young Democratic Party voters, and that strategy has worked out so well for Republicans, right? Now, despite the unbearable level of dumb fuckery from those panelists, when Lawrence talked to young people in New Hampshire, believe it or not, their priorities were much more substantive, although some of the concerns that they expressed were predictably bizarre. Are there any issues that Gen Z cares about that the average politician does not, and and you want them to focus more on it. Those aren't reforming gun policies. They're not working for their best interests. I think that there's a level of, I'm gonna take this into my own hands. I'm gonna do what I need to do to survive. Is that right? Absolutely not. I know for one, I didn't see uh, people robbing stores in California day in and day out with out any repercussions under Donald Trump's presidency. I think that supporting and protecting um, LGBTQ plus rights is very important to me. The content that's being dispersed on social media, it really seems that a lot of this content is un-American. And we have this crisis where students are becoming less and less patriotic and they learn to hate their country instead of recognizing that America can be made better. I'm sorry, but addressing how young people hate America is not a real issue, nor is it one that can be solved by a policy. As free Americans, we have the right to burn the flag and hate America, so fucking cope, you nerd, okay? But you actually did hear some real issues sprinkled in there, right? And before that, all of the panelists talked about the cost of living and the housing market and how difficult it is for young people to buy a house. The number one issue is cost of living. If things keep going the way they're going, aren't be able to afford a home because the cost of direct housing is just astronomical right now. A lot of people in my age group can't afford to buy homes. Um, we're finding that it's just harder and harder to keep up. So those are actually real issues that affect young people in a very real way. And I'm showing you a lot of negative, but to be fair to Lawrence Jones, these panels did include other people who were much more intelligent and I think more representative of the average young voter. However, these panels are always filled with people who just, I think, aren't representative samples for young people. I think that there's going to be a lot of progressive young people, and then there's going to be a lot of folks that are kind of in the middle, but there's going to be very few conservative boomer-esque young people. But, you know, if you watch these panels, you'd get the the impression that they're, they're so common because they're overrepresented, but that's not the case. But nonetheless, it is nice to see real issues that affect young people actually brought up. Now, on Maria Bartiromo's show, this was something that two of her guests brought up as well, which was actually really great to see. 
So a lot of young people don't want to rent anymore. They would like to buy a home. They would like to start families. But the problem is they cannot afford a down payment. They can't afford to save up for a down payment because rent is so high. Their groceries are mm. so high. Their gas bills are so high. So they can't afford any of this. They're living at home with mom and dad. That's not the way any young people want to live. Young Americans are really feeling the, pe the pinch. Credit card debt in this nation has never been higher. And that burden sits on the backs of millennial Americans and generations. Generation Z Americans. They're burdened by yeah. mountains of student debt as well, and they cannot afford to purchase a home with mortgage rates at 7-8%. They're stuck in what right. I call the rental rabbit hole. And that right there is precisely it. So we have a situation where surprisingly the pundits are specifically speaking to issues that young people care about. But the problem is that their acknowledgement of said issues is not accompanied with policy solutions. There's no talk of raising the minimum wage, rent control, or God forbid public housing. The implied solution here is is to vote Republicans and things will magically get better because since things are bad under Biden, well, the solution is obviously to vote Biden out and vote a Republican in, even if they support zero policies that will actually improve your life. So it's an analysis that is not convincing because it's so intellectually shallow that you don't have to be that savvy to see through the bullshit, right? But I mean, they're at least pandering, right? They're trying. They're actually talking about real problems, but identifying issues with zero fixes is not going to convince young people. They are smarter than that. And when it comes to one of the most important issues young people care about, student debt, the way that they talk about this is infuriating because they're just trying to fucking gaslight us. I remember a young person calling me and saying, oh, I'm so excited that Joe Biden is going to forgive all of my student debt. I mean, isn't wasn't that a promise that this president made to young people and they believed it? So they came out and voted for him. It's a false promise. And the Supreme Court went, roundly rejected that. Right. They roundly rejected that Caroline, idea. And it was it, but it now may have been a <laughs> false promise, but it worked, Caroline. It came. It, it brought young people out, even if he knew it was unconstitutional. But yes, Maria, that was before young Americans and all Americans were feeling the real pinch okay. in their pocketbooks. I think it's also a little bit insulting that young people are believed to only really care about their debts being forgiven and getting freebies. Says the person with a net worth of $3 million and probably no student debt. See, this is what I mean. They talk about how difficult it is for young people to make it in this economy, but then they shit all over a policy like student debt cancellation that would actually help. Right. And Maria Bartiromo actually tried to convince us that Biden lied by canceling debt because he knew that it was unconstitutional. But that's bullshit. He does have the authority to cancel student debt and he should have canceled it all. So that way there was no time for the GOP to challenge it. But that little amount that he did choose to cancel was struck down by our partisan Supreme Court. That's not his fault. And young people know that that's not his fault. In fact, 85 percent of college students rightfully blame the Supreme Court and Republicans, not just. Biden. And if they really believed that it was unconstitutional, why not run on legislation to cancel it and get it done the constitutional way? It's because they don't actually want to help us. They're just pandering and that's it. They just want your vote, but they're not going to do jack shit for you. But Tommy Loren and Maria Bartiromo almost sounded sympathetic there, especially when you juxtapose the way that they talk about student debt to the way that other young people talk about student debt, because I think that it's really unwise for Fox News hosts to be very hostile when talking about this very popular pol policy issue that young people want, especially when they're trying to appeal to them. But the way that other young people talk about this, I mean, it's a whole different story. They basically tell other young people, go fuck yourself if you want your debt canceled, even a little bit, fuck off with that. In theory, I would also love it. I've been working through college to try and keep afloat, but I think it would end up being a huge burden on the taxpayer. And after I graduate, that will be subsequently me and all of my peers. So I think college is definitely way too expensive. It's inflated, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous, but having it forgiven would just put burden on the taxpayers and in the long run, I think it'll do more harm. I think when someone enters into any contractual agreement, such as taking out loans for college, there's an obligation to pay that back. Forgiving student loans, I would try to keep that as a minimum because mm -hmm. it's, 
in the end, it does fall on the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. The taxpayer didn't take out the loan. Shut the fuck up, you absolute fucking nerd. Holy shit, these kids are insufferable. The taxpayer also didn't choose to take out PPP loans, but yet we had to foot the bill for that, and you don't seem to have a problem with it. Funny how that works, right? So then what's the solution? If you're shitting on student debt cancellation, what is the fucking solution? Well, if you already have student loans, the solution is get fucked. And if you don't have them yet, then just don't go to college. That's the point that they tried to drive home with the cute conservative panel. So we're told that we live in a meritocracy, and even though times are tough, we can still make it if we work hard enough. We then try to work hard enough, put ourselves through school to get ourselves a better job so we can make it. And then when it turns out we're no better off and realize that the American dream is a complete fucking lie, we then get scolded when we become disillusioned with the system because we're not paying patriotic enough, yet they expect your vote. It's honestly insane, right? But to their credit, the fact that they brought up actual issues, even if there's no solutions, was good to see, right? Now, I find it a little bit interesting that these Zoomers and millennials that they bring on, so many of them, if not most of them, conspicuously sound a lot like conservative boomers who watch Fox News, and, you know, they're out there, right? But these types of young people are not that common as Fox News wants you to believe. Who do you see as that inspirational figure that represents your generation? Like you can go out there and say that that could be my president. I support President Trump mm -hmm. because he represents freedom. I don't think we're tough on crime enough. I mean, you got all these um, attorney generals and DAs who don't prosecute these violent criminals and they're back out on the streets within a week. I think being soft on crime is what's led to more crime. When you're hard on it and you know that there's ramifications for certain behavior, it is a strong deterrent for future such behavior. I have a lot of experience being censored, yeah. so I, I'm normally not able to gain that much attention on social media. That's definitely been a challenge for myself and with my school. I got censored for talking about the vaccine, which is my one of my main missions, it's to expose and talk about medical transparency because that's one of the most things that I, I would say are not talked about at all. COVID still exists in California, apparently. <laughs> I'm convinced that all of these young people had their brains replaced with Fox News NPC dialogue options programmed by an 80-year-old Fox News loyalist. I mean, how else do you explain that fucking stupidity right there? Like, it, maybe this is cognitive dissonance or cope, but I feel like they can't even be serious. Like, they've got to be trolling, right? They're saying what they need to say to get on TV, and they know what Fox News wants to hear, so they're saying what Fox News wants. How can you say with a straight fucking face that Donald Trump represents your generation? He couldn't possibly represent our generation if his life depended on it. So, I mean, either you live in a bubble or you're a dumb because that is not a representative sample of young people. But the reason why they platform these types of young people in particular is to give you the impression that the Republican Party has actually brought in its appeal to the point where a lot of young people support them. And, you know, if you happen to see that segment and you're under 85, then maybe you'll realize that it's not that weird to be young and conservative. In fact, maybe it's cool to sound like your grandparents or your racist Facebook uncle uh, being a conservative, it's actually kind of hip and cool because there are other youngsters who are very conservative. I mean, that's kind of the subtext. That's how they're trying to subtly sell it to you, right? And they're not very explicit here, but that's the takeaway if you watch all of these segments. But the problem is that they want to make conservatism sound like a bitch and new trend for youngsters while simultaneously complaining about how nobody likes them, specifically because they're conservative and conservatism is insufferable. So on one hand, it's cool. On another hand, people are going to bully you if you're a conservative. People will stop and scream at us saying, you're not welcome here. They'll cuss at you. Uh, people will look at you in class and storm out and just in anger. People will send so many hate messages. And that was Jasmine being nice. This past year in particular, I don't know what switch flipped. Um, but the amount of hate that was felt in our conservative and Republican groups was heartbreaking. I don't even know how to describe it. Unbearable. Um, unbearable. Mm. I post one turning point thing, I lose 100 followers. Oh, yeah. Why? Wow. But when you post like about abortion or about something else, I don't know, follow you, I just scroll past. No, I've lost so yeah. many followers about being vocal on social media. Uh -huh. So maybe before I used to just like post myself a lot and I got so many followers and things like that. And then once I started being vocal about like my political beliefs, I lost so many followers. 
Jesus showed us that like when you are standing by the truth, you are going to be persecuted for it. And that's something that I'm reminded of each time. And if like the world is with me, I know I'm not with God. So um, if I'm getting attacked by the world, I know I'm doing right by God. In other words, keep screaming, shut the fuck up at me. It only makes my opinions worse. Yeah. So, I mean, this is where the conservative victim complex comes back to bite them in the ass, because on one hand, they want you to think that being a conservative makes you cool and edgy and counterculture. But on the other hand, everybody is going to fucking hate you because of your dog shit policies. So, I mean, they're not doing a very good job of selling it because that is contradictory, right? When you see an advertisement for a particular clothing brand, the goal is to make those people look cool, right? They never say, well, if you buy our clothes, people are going to bully you because you look stupid, right? But that's kind of the pitch here that they're making to young people. And there is so much more clips that I want to show you. But if we continue to talk about this, then this would be a feature length film. But I mean, if you have time, check out the cons the cute conservatives, excuse me, panel in particular, because the anti-vax comments there were so fucking unhinged and deranged and genuinely shocking. But I mean, I think we've seen enough footage to get a sense of the overall strategy that Republicans have deployed to attract young voters. And even though wading through the dumb fuckery in these videos nearly gave me a migraine, I'm glad that I did it nonetheless, because I do feel a lot more confident that the Republican Party, at least in the short term, isn't going to be able to win young people over if they keep going about it in this way. Young people are smart. They don't just want to be heard and feel seen. They actually want you to stop being evil, and they want you to fight for policies that materially benefit them. But even though right-wing propaganda isn't maybe that effective right now republicans are playing the long game which is why they're going after public education so harshly in certain states so i mean it is important to reassess the situation in a couple of years but at least for now their hello fellow kids shtick is pathetic and patronizing and i promise you it's not going to attract young voters up yours up yours up yours sons of bitches bitches Woke moralism. Woke moralism. Woke moralism. I dreamed I saw my maternal grandmother. She was stroking herself absentmindedly. I let her have her way. The genital region was exposed. I let her have her way.